Hello, <laughs> brothers and sisters. I hope everything is well with everyone. Hope my TV is not too loud. Let me turn it on a little bit. Okay, guys. So I have totally been slacking, like literally been slacking. And not lacking, like say, you know, like I've fallen off and then I'm not worshiping God anymore or anything like that. But I realized that it's just, everything has just been so much on me, you know, like personally. Um, I think I've just been going through a lot of things and, you know, the enemy has been trying to squeeze every little praise out of me that he can. And every time that he does that, you know, I try to fight. So I feel like <laughs> he's even tried to intimidate me, like literally, I kid you not. Like, I don't even want to go there. You're talking about things following me around and everything. Like literally these witches have stopped at nothing to like just make my life a living hell. Okay, excuse me, I say the H word. I live in Hades, <laughs> better word. Um, yeah, but you know, God reminded me of a vow I made with him and that's like the vow that no matter what happens I'm always going to come and share the word and I feel like I've been going through like a lot of training in regards to um, different areas that God have called me uh, to cover and <laughs> I'm not sure if I should share that but yeah but this is something that you know I've been trying to dig more and more into so I just been like studying some wild things, you know, and it's one thing that I've noticed is that God have called us to be a surface level Christian. God have not called us to not dig deeper into him. And I feel like I've been robbed of this for like a lot of years. I've been robbed of people going through the Bible and teaching the correct doctrine. I've been robbed on people not speaking about deliverance because you need deliverance in your life you understand you have we have a lot of strongholds and we we struggle with a lot of things and some things you know it's coming from generation to generation and we don't realize that and so what happened is that when you start to wake up in regards to these things you'll realize that the enemy he tries to stop he, he tries to stop you like never before i'm telling you Within my whole entire walk with God, all these years, maybe over nine, ten years, and I can't say I've walked wholeheartedly with God throughout that nine or ten years. I've backslidden, you know, but I've always came back to Christ. I will go back into the world. I come back to Christ. Go back into the world. Thank, thank God. God is not a man, you know. God is not a, like a, a a human man like us. Because people always have the same to say. Oh, if if God was like man, you know what I mean. So it's like. If God was like man, a lot of us wouldn't even be living today. You understand? So it's just within that regards. So, I mean, I haven't like recently gone back into the world or anything like that, you know. But I know that I am pressing forward no matter what it is. Because you know what, brothers and sisters? You know, I, I struggle a lot with a lot of things. And that's the thing. With a, as you're a child of God, you're, we're supposed to be um, not defeated, you know. We're supposed to be walking um, through victory with Christ in our midst. And that's that's the main goal of a Christian. And, and I'm pretty much sure that I haven't arrived to that as yet. And I'm still going through th some things and I'm still, you know, learning some things. And I'm still understanding some things um, concerning God. So I don't want anyone to think that, oh, yeah, you know, like everything is going perfect in my life or, you know, that um, I haven't been facing any opposition because I come and I share the word of God. That means my life is on a pedal stool, anything like that. You know, I am I am lowly and I'm lowly in my heart. You understand? Like I'm lowly in my heart. And it's one thing that I keep on praying for because I don't ever want to be puffed up with pride, you know. And I feel like that's the one thing I am praying to God for that even if you know and when I've arrived to a certain level that he's trying to take me in him that I will remember not to look down on people that I'll remember that pride come before a haughty falls brothers and sisters I don't want to ever be you know 
here as oh i'm doing this for me or i'm doing i'm doing this for likes or doing this for shares because i i i don't i don't want the praise i i pray to god that everyone that watches my video that you guys may look to god and not look to anika because i'm telling you i don't want that to be I don't want that to be the, the, the main reason why people come here, it, you know, are to watch me or even for me in my own way to think that, oh, I'm puffed up with pride. Oh, I've arrived, you know, into the things of Christ because I have not arrived. I am just a babe in Christ, you know, barely but being mature, eating the food, which is the word of God. And so I know that also like a, a lot of other young people also, they're, they're on this road, you know, they, they're, they're struggling in, with their walk in, in, in Christ. And so today as I, as I went to read my, my daily scripture um, for the day, you know, even like before God reminded me a couple of days ago about the vow that I made with him or whatever, you know, um, a vow to say, to, to preach his word no matter what, you know, even if. Um, so I was just feel to, I was just feel led today because you know what? I believe that God was saying to me, Anika, share a word for the young people because a lot of the young people are in the same situation as me. You know, they're trying to do good, you know, but every time we try to do good, it's like the enemy's always right there in our ears. And sometimes we don't have spiritual parents, like a spiritual mother, a spiritual father in the body of Christ. Someone who won't judge us, someone who won't look down on us, you know, to say, okay, well, this is what you're going through. But da da da, you know, like try to talk down on you and stuff like that. Because if I know people, there, there's a lot of people not been through it. A lot of us as young people are going through, are going through church hurt. A lot of us as young people knew religion growing up. You know, just go to church, just go to church, just go to church. And I, I don't even know. I wasn't even going here today. You know, I wasn't even coming here today. But it's just like the Holy Spirit is leading me in this regard. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because this is something that I struggled with and this is something that I continue to struggle with. You know, when God first called me and he said, okay, this is what I'm going to do or whatever, he, he decided, he said to me, he said to me, he's like, you have to unlearn every single thing that you have learned. And what does that mean? Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing back that to my attention. That means to unlearn what you grew up learning in the churches. Just going there every Sunday to go sit, going up to the to the to the to the altar. You know, you you go to prayer, you pray to God on Sundays, but then during the whole entire week, you know nothing about God. You don't come into the presence of God. You don't allow God to, to or the Holy Spirit to dictate your life. And even sometimes to me, I struggle with the same thing. You know, because these are not patterns that you drop overnight, but because the Holy Spirit dwells inside of each and every one of us, you know, we begin to to learn how to slowly let things go and to, to slowly like just overcome, you know, they don't talk to you about, oh, you need to forgive you need to let go of forgiveness you know any unforgiveness in your heart so guess what you struggle and you grow up you know concerning and and you grow up in in offense and you don't grow a thick skin because you think that okay well maybe everything is supposed to be handed to me because if it's one thing i know that's how i used to be and this is how i struggle sometimes you know but it, it's only the, 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 you know, the grace of God, why I'm even in front of a lot of people to try to at least come and, and drop a word. Because I, brothers and sisters, Jesus, God is coming back. God is coming back again. And this is why every day I try to, to go to God and I said, Lord, I repent. You know, I, I might not know. I, I might say with my mouth, if it's, it's something I noticed recently, is not only that a lot of people has been trying to, the enemy has been using a lot of people in regards to witchcraft and everything to stop my progress into like the way how God really wants to use me. You know, and even I stand in my way a lot of times by being lazy. You understand? So, you know, I'm sorry. Like, you know, I just want to say I apologize if I if I haven't, you know, been consistent enough with coming and sharing a word. Like, let me just greatly apologize. I apologize to you, every one of you that watches my channel, my videos from the bottom of my heart. And 
what the enemy does he he throws circumstances at you to the point where you feel like oh man you don't even want to be bothered with the things of christ of god you know you don't even want to come and share you don't even want to come and do anything because he's trying to you know let circumstances overcome you and he's trying to use every single person in your life against you and the, this is just goes to show you how the tactics and how the enemy works brothers and sisters but nevertheless, um, I enough of the, <laughs> I wouldn't say enough of the bobbling. Let me take that back because that is not a bobbling because someone needed to hear that today. I am convinced that someone needed to hear that today. Hallelujah. So the scripture that I wanted to um, read today that I said that I went over today and I just felt led to, to speak to the young people today. I'm going to just run to it real quick. It, it's going to be... Um, it's going to be taken from Ethlusiastic, Ethlusiastes, sorry, I'm trying to pronounce that word, That's, uh, that book. It says, remember God in your youth. A lot of us, you know, when, like me, you know what, brothers and sisters, let me share one more testimony. You know that before, when I was younger in Christ, when I gave my life to Christ, because I gave my life to Christ when I, when I was like at least 16 years old, 16. And when I give, when I got baptized, right, I was on fire for God and everything. And then I, I, I later on let other kids that are not, don't even know nothing about God or is going the way of, of God led me off the path. So that's happening to a lot of us today as young people. You know, but listen brothers and sisters, let me blow the let me blow the trumpet, let me blow the horn. Come back to Christ, come back to your first love. It says it in Revelation. It says come back to your first love. He said this I have against you that you have lost your first love. Come back to your first love, young people. There's nothing in this world, no vanity, no nothing that's worth losing your life. That's worth, get, you know, giving away your salvation or not earning the salvation or not earning or wanting to run and, and run after the things of God. Because I'm telling you, when God comes and we're all to be judged, <laughs> it's, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. But I'm going to just run ahead and read this. This is for all my young people. So if you know of any young people, please share. So at least we can we can reach as much young people as possible. I'm not doing this for likes or, or even for like anything else. This is all about God. Please decrease me, mighty God, if I'm being puffed up, if I'm being trying to get worship. And, you know, this is not for you. Please forgive me. But I know with all my heart, Lord God, that this is for you because I don't play with you like that. I am so fearful. I'm in such awe of God of what he will think about me. On that day, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, the only thing that I want to hear is well done, my servant. That's what I want to hear. And... I've been slacking so much, so hard, you don't even understand. And it's like convictions after convictions, you know, because no matter what it is, even if I'm slacking off, I at least try to read a scripture. Even if, you know, I just still try to worship, even on the days that I don't feel like it, I still try to push myself to worship because that's where I find peace. That's where I can just lay at his feet, you know, and he will remind me like, listen, you're only living through my grace is not what you can do for me. It's not what you're doing, you know, what you think you're doing on your own. But it's what you can do through me with pursuing me. And this is the only thing that's been keeping me. The only thing, brothers and sisters. So it says here in verse 1 of Ecclesiastes 12, verse, I'm going to read from 1 to eight because this is what uh it, it this part it covers it says remember thoughtfully also your creator in the days of your youth for you are not your own but his before the evil days come or the years the years draw near when you say of physical pleasures 
I have no enjoyment and delight in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened by impaired vision. Hallelujah. And the clouds of depression return after the rain of tears in the day when the keepers of the house, which is your hands and your arms, uh, tremble and strong men, your feet and your knees, bow themselves and the grinders, which is your your teeth, your molar teeth, how them um, bow themselves and grind and grind your molar teeth cease because they are few, and those eyes who look through the windows grow, grow dim. When the doors, lips that is, are shut in the streets, and the uh, the sound of your grinding of the teeth, right of, is low. And one riseth at the sound of a bird and the crowing of a rooster. And all daughters of music, which is your voice and your ears, uh, sing softly. Furthermore, they are afraid of a high place and of danger on the road. Uh, the almond tree, which is your hair, blossom white. And the grasshopper, a little thing, is a burden. And the, uh, the caper berry, desire, appetite, fails. For a man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets and marketplace. Earnestly remember your creator before the silver card of life is broken or golden bowl is crushed or the pitcher at the fountain is shattered and the wheel at the cistern is crushed. Um, a cistern is something that is, is used to held water. Right, but this is all of this is you is being met metho metaphorically said, and uh, it has to deal with our members of our body. Um, and I'm the version that I'm reading, by the way, because the Holy Spirit was just like halfway reminded me, like, oh, say the version that you're reading from. I'm reading from the Amplified version, um, the A the AMP version. Then verse seven states, uh, then the dust out of which God made man's body will return to earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it vanity of vanities, says the preacher. All that is done without God's guidance is vanity, it's futility. Okay, Holy Spirit, I need your help. Okay, so what is this saying to us, brothers and sisters? The Bible is saying to us that as us right now in our youths, what is it saying to us youths, our young brothers, our young sisters? What is this saying to us? It's saying to us that don't wait for you to get old. Don't wait for your hair to get gray. Don't wait for your eyes to become dimmed or blind. Don't wait for your knee or your, your knees or your, your feet to be given out, you know, for you to start to worship God. Let's do it now while we have a chance, while we're still young, while we're still strong in, while we're still strong in the flesh, you know? Let's do it now because if we wait until this time, how can we give God praise? How can God use us in the way that he wants to use us if we wait until we're turning old? Right? Because by then all these things that you you would have accumulated throughout your whole time and your whole, your whole life that you have lived concerning whatever vanity that was, it, it's, it's, now, it's now considered as, as futility. You know, it's, it's not the same because you don't decide that you think, oh, even for me, I'm guilty of this because I'm always working, 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 you know, and this is what I think the enemy is also using to take my time away also for, um, from my study time some, at times, even though at work, I, I am able to do things like that, like study, watch a video, you know, just keep myself like learning, you know, etc. But this is what the enemy does. He piles on every single thing on you. He make you crave the world. He he may tell you like, oh, like, listen, oh, your friends are going to go to party this week, this weekend coming up. I'm going to go to the party. Oh, we're going to drink. We're going to smoke. You know, we only have one life to live. Let's live our best life because this is what our young people are doing these, these days. You know, let's live our best life. So. You don't wait until you are now feeble. You're now, your hair is like grown dust gray, you know. 
You don't wait till you're turning gray and old, young man, young, 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 uh, young daughters, queens and, and kings of, of God. Because daughters, that's what we are in his eyes. We're his princess, you know, we're his queens. For the sons, my, my, uh, our young brothers, you know, the Bible says that young men, I call upon you because you are strong. You understand? So man could just you know be like only for the young men or it could be men on a hold as the unisex you understand which is talking about ladies and and gentlemen let me try to find that verse oh my god i'm just a little bit happy i'm so happy i came to share okay um i hope some of this uh peace is rubbing off on you because i know that uh, the enemy have definitely been trying to try to oppress me. Sorry, brothers and sisters. All right, I just didn't want to leave anyone without uh, not having a scripture concerning this. Let me use this one. It's the same one. There we go. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and, and say the whole scripture. Um, yeah, I was not planning to go here, but go ahead, Holy Spirit. I love you. Oh my God. I love you, Holy Spirit. Okay. So I have, it says here, and it's actually in first John two, verse 14, uh, brothers and sisters. And it says that I have written unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men. Because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. So see, brothers and sisters, he said that we are, we are going to be able, we are overcomers, you know, in him. And that he gives us the power, and he said he, he calls up on us, right? Because we are strong, and that we were able to overcome the enemy. So I know that sometimes we don't feel like, you know, we could overcome him, you know, but the Bible says that greater is he than is, that is in us than he that is in the world. So even though sometimes I might feel like the enemy is trying to make me feel oppressed or feel depressed or bring me down, you know, in, in like a lot of ways, like it's like I'm always pushing through. I'm always overcoming. The Bible also says that, listen, we are set every day as sheeps to be slaughtered. And I'm totally going to butcher this. But it says more than anything, it says that we are more than overcomer. And he says that there's nothing in this world that should be able to separate us from his love. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name, O oh God. So young people, whether it be fornication, you're living with a with a guy that you know, and I've done it before. I'm not calling anybody out. I'm I'm just I'm just saying because I've been through all of this stuff. I've been through smoking, I've been through fornication, I've been living with a guy and I haven't been married, all of these things. But it's like all of a sudden, like you know, just coming to God and just and just laying it all at the altar to before God, you know, and letting God know that Lord, I don't want to be this way. Like my 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 generation have looked at like a lot of things, you know, that they think that it's cool. Smoking weed is cool, and I've done that for like I was smoking weed for like eight years. I was introduced to it by an ex boyfriend, and I've struggled to stop. I had struggled to stop smoking it, but let me tell you something. When God came through for me and really, I really like, you know, decided to put that down. God delivered me from that big time. It's to the point where if I go anywhere, I smell, I smell weed. I'm just like, you like gross. Like it, it's almost like I have to cover my nose. Right. Can you believe that someone who was smoking this thing that now come having like a, some type of issue towards <laughs> smelling it or doing anything like that 
is only by the grace of God. And when the enemy comes and tries to tell me, oh, you know, remind me of, of oh, going back to smoking or doing anything like that that is not of God. I'm just like, you know what, Satan, I plead the blood of Jesus against you. Because me, I'm not going to let anything separate me from the love of God. I'm not going to let, he said nothing can separate us from him, but sin can separate us from him, honestly. He will still love you while you're in your sin, yes. But are you going to hear his voice? Are you going to have his direction in your life? No. No. He might still talk to you here and there, and he might still convict you to leave certain things alone, yes. But there's a certain relationship that we have with God when we're not in sin. When we're not puffed up and like, you know, trying to not like live doing the things that we do. But he loves us all. Even when, you know, we were in our sinful ways, he still loved us, you know. But that doesn't give us the right to continue to you know, to abuse his grace. And I'm like a perfect example of that. So everything that I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, tonight, I don't, I, I, these are things that I've dealt with or these are things that I'm going through, you know, but I just want to be transparent because you know what? If it's one thing I, I always try to see is that sometimes I, I, I feel like I look up to people, you know, and I start to idolize them because I feel like that's not good, by the way, because... God said we should not have any idols and we should oh he should be the only one that we look up to and everything in regards to when we're gonna go beyond that type of like um affection for people we're gonna become idolization now you know so but you get what I'm saying is that I didn't think that they went through anything you understand because some people never share the testimony about what they go through through Christ they just on their high horse and they're just like okay well this is, this is, you know, I'm going through and they talking down on you and they telling you, oh, you need to do this, you should do that, etc. You get what I'm saying? And I don't want to be that person. I want to, I want to come down to every, each and every individual's level. I want to be able to understand why people do what they do. And, and I feel like this is why God have taken me through a lot of the trials that I've been through and a lot of things that I've been through. It's for me to come down lowly in spirit. To see where people is coming from. Because a lot of people before have said to me. Oh. Um, oh Anika you act like you're better than people. You act like you're better than people. You know. If I tell them like. Oh I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to cross cross certain line. Because I know the consequences that comes with it. Concerning you know. My father which is Abba. You know I'm not going to do it. Hook up with you before marriage. No I'm not going to do it. Once upon a time, I was there, though, where I would have sex before marriage. But just like how I believe that just like how a man can lay down with you in the bed and give you kids, they could make marriage the first foundation of any relationship and give their life to Christ. So if you don't give your life to Christ, wholeheartedly sold out and, you know, repent of all your sins and everything, don't think you're going to marry me. Because I won't marry you. The Bible says that, listen, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Do not be unequally yoked with people, brothers and sisters, that are in not, not on the same road that you're on. And it's not that you're judging that person. And it's not that you're talking down on that person. But people don't understand is that the Bible says certain things. And, you know, the Father said, listen, as long as you, you obey my commandments, that's all that matters to me. That's all that matters to me. Obey my commandments. Glory be to your name, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. So, you know, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, young young people, I'm talking to you like I'm talking to myself also. Let us strive for the things of God. Let us strive for the things of the kingdom of God. Let us do that because I'm telling you, there is a time coming. It is already upon us, and it's, it's, <laughs> oh, hallelujah, Jesus, glory be to your name, oh God. Mm. Oh, my people that are called by my name. Oh, Rabakete mm, Labasaya. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, mighty God, we thank you. If my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek after my face and turn from their wicked ways. 
how spare their land. Oh, mighty God. Mm -mm -mm. Young people, be encouraged. A lot of us are depressed. A lot of us are having suicidal thoughts. But what if I tell you that deliverance is the children's food? It is the children's food. So you know, I, I believe that, you know, I've been learning a lot about strongholds. And I, I'm going to revert back to that because I, I started talking about that when I started off. But, but I'm going to revert back to strongholds, things that are coming through to your generation, whether your mom smoked, your dad smoked, you know, now you smoked, or your grandparent, your great-grandparent. All of this is what I'm realizing now is a generational curse. Certain, type, certain things that you know you don't want to do, but yet still you, you feel like you're being led to do it because this is the enemy's trap. It's to keep us trapped in bondage. The Bible said, do not, be not yoke again. You know, under, hold on, let me look for it because I don't want to, I don't want to. I believe it's in Romans 8, but I'm just, you know. Um. Oh man, I don't want to take too much time trying to look for it, but I'm, I don't know, let me check Galatians 5, Galatians 5. I am sorry guys, listen. It's pure Holy Spirit driving the, the, the driving the car right now. I am not driving the car right now. Honestly. So, I could just, I'm just going accordingly. Uh, but I found the scripture. So, it's actually in Galatians 5 verse 1. It says to stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled, entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And what is this practically saying, brothers and sisters? I'm talking to my brothers and sisters that have been baptized, have also like given their life to Christ once upon a time, but they realize that, you know, because of the cares of this world, they, we allow the enemy to choke the word of God out of us. And so we have allowed also circumstances to... To, to to choke the word of God of, out of our out of our hearts or out of our lives. And you know, we go back or revert back to our old sinful ways. So pretty much this is what this verse is for is that listen, if I've set you free, then stay free. Don't go back into sin. Don't don't and listen, if I what if I tell you that with these patterns and with these strongholds, this is what the enemy is trying to do. He's trying to keep us in bondage. This is what he's trying to do. He's trying to keep us in bondage. And when you when you allow him to keep you underneath that bondage, this is why I have to fight. And I've been fighting so much, so hard. You have no understanding. Sometimes I have to ask God, I'm like, Lord, why me? But then there are other times when I when I feel so like <laughs> over ambitious and i'm like lord yes holy spirit yes it stops here with me it stops here with me not another generation in jesus name not another generation i tell i said lord i'm willing to fight and i said i don't care what it takes mighty god i say i don't care what it takes mighty god what i said lord whatever it takes heavenly father whatever the attacks of the enemy throws at me whatever the times when he tried to shut my mouth and don't allow me to pray and if i could still worship during those times if i could still only connect you even when it's through your words even if i don't pray as much as i'm supposed to as, as, as long as I'm, I'm 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 like you know being linked to you in somehow some way which is not good because you should always pray he said to pray you know and make your supplications be known 
but it's like sometimes I feel like also, maybe a lot of you guys also go through this, young people, brothers and sisters in Christ. Some of us sometimes, you know, we get to a point where the enemy tried to choke us literally, you know, and figuratively. And so we come to a place, even if we, we're fasting in that day and we know that we're supposed to be praying with dynamite, like just power, you know? The enemy, he tries to keep your mouth shut and that's his gold. But for me, what I do, I find other outlets. Like if you can't pray, brothers and sisters, try to try to come upon worship music. Try to worship, worship, you know, or try to read the word. And sometimes like me, I, I'd be just, oh my goodness, that spirit of distraction has been trying to like grab a hold of me. But never alone, I've just been fighting, 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 fighting. Because I'm like, Lord, whatever these patterns in you know pattern is in my family they have to break whatever my ancestors did in the generation to come bef um, before me to you know i don't know what they have done i don't know if they were even worshiping the devil i don't know where the altar was i, I don't know any of these things but i said lord <sighs> young people i'm telling you there is more things to just being a surface level christians he's calling us to be deeper go get deeper with him and it's not about being religious by going to church every Sunday. All these things are good. But this is my main point, And let me wrap it up because I've already been here past 36 minutes. And I didn't know where I was going to go with this. Because I did not plan anything to come and to say anything. But I know that I had to leave a word today. Because, you know, I didn't last week at all. So, I just want to say, like... Whatever you're going through, whatever patterns that have been passed down to your generation, and whatever the enemy is trying to tell you that you can't do, you know, all these spirits, because this is what um, religion didn't teach us. Anger is a spirit. Lust is a spirit. Perversion is the strong man to lust, which is also a spirit. You understand me? Poverty is a spirit. Lord said he wished most of all that we shall be prosperous. You understand? A lot of us are living mediocre lives because we are not willing to fight. We're not willing to dig deeper into the things of God. And then guess what's what happened? We're now divided up in different denominations. And whoever is fighting that, oh, we should worship, worship on Sunday. We should worship on Saturday. If we're all worshiping the one God, why are we fighting? Why can't we just get together? As children of God, why can't we just come together as one as the, in the body of Christ? Why do we have so much division? So it's like all of these things that we grew up, certain people are fighting over certain things. And all oh, people are saying, oh, it doesn't go this way. It goes and doesn't go that way. You know? So I, I, I don't even know why I'm going here. But the main fact of what I'm talking about is that please wake up and understand that we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against principalities. We're fighting against powers. We're fighting against uh, forces of darkness in high places. So let's wake up, brothers and sisters, young people. Homosexuality. You know, this is why, one of the reasons why I believe that God also destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah is, 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 is because of sexual immorality. And in some areas, more than, more than some, you know, it's taking over the whole world. But in some areas, more than some, it's, it's, it's heightened. It's heightened. You know, but... Sex before marriage is not becoming a norm amongst our young people, amongst us young people. And we don't, we don't want to get married. You know, we don't want to be living a whole life with, with Jesus Christ on the in, the, within our midst. Because he lives on the inside of each and every one of us. You know, we're sons and daughters of, of, of Christ, of God. We're the hearers of his kingdom. H-E-I-R-S, hearers. And he said, every single one of us that put on God, that put on, you know, the armor of God and come into his presence, we're known as, as his daughters, as his sons. 
So this is our inheritance, brothers and sisters. Whether you have backslidden, young man, young lady, what if you have gone astray, you know, you're, you're just doing all manner, manner of things, you know. Come back to your first love, brothers and sisters. So I just wanted to go ahead and wrap this up because I've already been on here 40 minutes. <laughs> so as we wrap this up tonight, you know, please remember, remember, you know, it, the Bible says that the, the things of of the, the 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 things of God is is considered foolishness to to the world, because they don't know they don't know God and you know whoever this is for, I'm pretty much sure the Holy Spirit will lead them to the video, and they'll watch, because I also have a lot of young people here, but I just wanted to to to, to um, if you haven't any of the young people that's gonna be watching this in the future, whether it be today, tomorrow, next week. Next month, I just want to reiterate the scripture, and I just, I just want to open the floor to. To uh, Romans ten. Verse nine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Come into my heart Come into my heart Come into my heart Lord Jesus Come in to stay Come in To my heart, Lord Jesus, into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Coming to stay, coming, I pray, coming to my heart, Lord Jesus. So I was led to sing that song come into my heart come into my heart come in to stay come in I pray mighty God so this song is for someone also you're asking God to come into your heart you're gonna be asking God to come into your heart and as I go um, I, I, rem I, I believe that God was saying to me yesterday you know he said to me he was just like listen at least make a video asking or telling people to come into the kingdom of God and I'm always closing out now these days with just like trying to have at least one person come back to God you know I'm not gonna do that in my own in my own strength I can't do that in my own strength but if I I believe if I sow the seed in that person's heart or in their spirit that God will do the rest God will work on that person's heart because I'm I don't have the power to but I felt led to sing that song as I was about to come and um, leave the, the scripture here of uh, Romans 10, um, verse 8. And I'm going to just read from verse 8 to verse 10. Um, it says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee. The word of God is, is close to you. That's what, that's what it's saying. It's even in your mouth. It states here, and in thine heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. And so that is verse 8 
of, of verse 10, Romans 10. And I'm reading from the King James Version, by the way. And verse 9 states that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, that shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10 states, and this is my my main, my, my yeah, so verse 9 and verse 10 is to be focused on. It's, I'm going to read verse 9 again. It says that, that if thou shalt confess with thine mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God uh, raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10 states, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with thy mouth confession is made unto salvation so i always close up by saying this what is this saying to us brothers and sisters it's saying that if we believe in our hearts that god ought sent his only begotten son to die on the cross to save us from all our sins and from all our transgressions and we believe that he was risen from the dead on the third day right if we believe this in our hearts then and we repent of all our sins which means we'll say lord again that's why maybe that's what the holy spirit had me sing that song it says come into my heart so then we give god a place in our heart and we ask of repentance and he said lord i give you my heart you know i give you my soul i give you everything of me mighty god you know and you ask God to dwell in your heart and you believe in your heart that, 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 that Jesus Christ died for your sin on the cross. Then you are saved tonight. You are saved, brothers and sisters. And what that does is that, that, that marks out your, your, your name out of the book of death and puts your, your name in the book of life. What is the book of life? There are many books, as it says in the Bible, especially in, 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 our, in our revelations. It talks about the book of life. But it says that the Bible says that there are there are many books, right? But the most the most special one would be the book of life. And what is the book of life? When we die, we will experience if we don't if we die and we believe in God and we believe in Christ and we lived for Christ, then or a mortal body if it this if 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 the whole, if you know if we pass away then if we pass away and this, this flesh that we're in, that is only a host for our spirit or soul, that you won't experience a second death. And so what happens with that second death is that if you don't give your life to Christ, you will experience a second death. So therefore, your, 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 your life will not be, your name will not be written into the book of life. It will be rather written into the book of death, right? Into the devil's book. Pretty much. So, when you die, if you're a believer, you don't experience a second death. But if you, when you die, if you didn't give your life to Christ, and you live this life, you didn't give your life to Christ or anything like this, you know, when you die from this body and your spirit leave this body, when judgment day comes, it says, in the Bible it says that the dead in Christ shall rise. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name, O God. But it said the dead in Christ shall rise, right? And then it, said, it, go, it goes on to say that, this is how it is when the dead in Christ shall rise first, so which means our, oh, there's going to come a judgment day when our, when we shall rise up again, whether it be our, our spirits. Yes, yeah, definitely going to be your spirits because, you know, this body is just a host. And that's why the Bible says, like, listen, that's why it was saying in Enthusiastic 12, I believe that that was verse, that was verse 9. It says, furthermore, because the preacher was wise. Hold on. It said something about when you die. He said, if you, oh, yeah, yeah, this is in verse 7. It says that then the dust, so that was pretty much the dust out of which God made man's body will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Oh, glory be to your name, O oh God. Oh, Holy Spirit. Oh, glory be to your name. Oh, mighty God. Oh, so there you go. The Holy Spirit just summed that up for us. He literally just summed that up for us. So I'm going to read that again. Because, yeah. It says that um, in Ecclesiastes 12, verse 
7. It says, Then the dust out of which God made man's body will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. So that sums up what I was trying to say. Okay? Holy Spirit, so sweet. I love you. Oh, yeah. But uh, God bless you, brothers and sisters. Have a beautiful week. Be blessed. And I hope a little bit of this uh, rubs off on you because I know that it's rubbed off on me. Okay? So I love you. And Jesus loves you. God bless you. And have a blessed week. Thank you for listening to this extremely long video. <laughs>